Welcome to Mail is Magic, a show about making mail and connecting with others. This is the fourth video in the series, and today we are talking about rubber stamp making. My name is Madeline Garcia, and I'm lead teaching artist at Minnesota Center for Book Arts. I'm super excited about this episode. I love rubber stamping. Uh, stamping has been used by Dada and Fluxus artists and was later embraced by male artists, male art artists. Um, who, in addition to using pre-made rubber stamps, also made their own, which is what we're going to do today. Um, by making your own rubber stamp, you can sort of create an image that functions as a signature of the sender, so something that really screams you, it'll be unique to you, um, and also it'll just be a quick way to transform any piece of mail you're sending into a unique piece of art. So. Stamp use, just like artist stamps, sort of plays with and imitates imagery that the Postal Service uses. So a lot of times when we receive packages, they already have stamps that the post has put on them. And so by adding our own stamps, we're sort of collaborating with them, I like to think. And collaboration is a key aspect in mail art. Um, Ray Johnson, who I spoke about in the last episode, who helped found the New York Correspondence School, would often sort of instruct his recipients um, of his mail art with like, add here, send here. And so this invitation to collaborate, I think is something that is really rare in art and also something that makes mail art really special and beloved. So I'd love to show you some examples of mail art. This first piece is by Ryosuke Cohen, and it shows a wide variety of rubber stamps and what it can look like when many artists um, collaborate with their stamping. And I just think all of the colors and textures are so beautiful. This next piece is by Leavenworth Jackson, and it really shows what it can look like when mini stamps are overlaid and overlapped and how also envelopes can be decorated with stamps. Next is a piece by Michael Lay, who is also known as A1 Waste Paper Co. Um, and also Hazel Jones. And I love how stamping has turned this piece of mail into stationery. Um, also, a lot of these look hand carved. Here is a piece by J.C. Palmer, who was known as Rudy Reveroid. Um, the repetition of the stamp here sort of creates a pattern, and I love the combination of stamping with collage, which, spoiler alert, is what we're going to be talking about in our next video. So hopefully you liked those examples. The next thing I want to do is show you how to make your own. Okay, so I'm going to be using uh, erasers to carve uh, my rubber stamp into you. You could also use a rubber carving block. And you will want to have an X-Acto knife and also a pencil um, to sketch out whatever you want your stamp to look like. If this is your first stamp, I'm going to recommend doing something more simple. Uh, but you'll definitely get the hang of it, it's sort of like a muscle. So I'm going to go ahead and make a box shape stamp. That's just an image I use a lot in my own art. And I'm going to go ahead and, well, I already did sketch it into a piece of eraser here. So go ahead and sketch your design into your eraser. Um, it will be the reverse image or a negative. So if you have something with text, you'll want to flip it. And the first thing that you'll do is cut out the shape of your stamp. And I recommend using an X-Acto knife. Uh, I'm sure if you had some heavy duty scissors, you could also try those. Uh, because my design has straight lines, I'm actually gonna go ahead and use a straight edge to make those cuts. And I'm going to skip ahead so you don't have to watch me do all of this. Okay. 
Okay, so here's my stamp and I've just taken out um, all of the background so that I'm just left with the shape of the image I want. Also, side note, you can use all of these uh, offcuts as erasers. Um, next thing we'll want to do is start to think about working reductively. Um, so we're just going to be carving out um, lines or maybe bigger spaces for you and your stamp. Um, but the parts that you carve will be the parts that when you stamp are left white and the parts that are raised uh, will be inked. And if you are a printmaker and you have access to linoleum carving and cutting tools, you can certainly use those as well. Um, I'm going to imitate those tools with my X-Acto knife by carving a V uh, to get the line. So for each line, I'm just going to go right next to it and put my X-Acto at like a 45 degree angle. And then I'll come back on the other side. And I'm just hoping that these two cuts uh, make a V shape. And then I should be able to remove um, that piece of eraser. And we have a valley here. <laughs> um, so I'm going to skip ahead again. So I'm just going line by line. And you'll want to make bigger cuts for um, deeper or wider lines, and of course smaller cuts for smaller lines. All right, so here is my completed stamp. Um, this is essentially a really crude version of relief uh, printmaking. So if you had fun with this, you have so much more to explore and learn. And I do want to mention that if doing this seems a little bit out of reach, um, industrial Rubbermaid stamps are also amazing. You can do so many more things with them and you can probably get a little more detail in your stamps. So the next thing I wanna do is test out this stamp. So uh, stamping can get a little messy. Uh, so I always recommend putting down some newspaper. And I do have another stamp here that I made a while ago and I wanted two stamps that would go together. So, um, as far as ink pads go, I really like this brand Colorbox, um, and I like it because the lid comes off all the way, and also the stamp pad is raised. Um, sometimes the ink pads are inset, and if you have a big stamp, it's a little bit hard to use. Also, they last a long time, so I'm just gonna gently ink up my stamp. Ah, might take some time just in the beginning. That looks great. And I'll just put it face down and reveal. Oh my gosh, I love it. This is awesome. So I do want to stamp on something. And I actually have an envelope here. And wow, this is a sticky situation. Got sticky real quick. Um, so this is the front of the envelope, and one thing that I really like to do when I'm stamping is to take a post-it and uh, block out an area, so that sticky side down, um, and that's just gonna leave this area all nice and clean and white, and for an envelope, that's exactly where I'm gonna put the address. Um, so then you can actually just stamp over. That looks good some pressure there. Oops. Okay. That was uneven. I'm going to do it again with the second stamp. Needs a lot more. That looks good. Maybe I'll put that here. Okay. This is great. And then you can just pull away your post-it and that gives you a nice clean space. Um, so like I said, I'm gonna use this to put the address for this piece of mail I'm sending. I also did wanna just show you um, a industrially made rubber stamp. I guess this one isn't quite industrially made. It's from Casey's Rubber Stamps. 
um, in the East Village in New York, and it's definitely a destination that next time you're in New York, they make these all in a tiny little shop. So here's um, a beloved Chihuahua stamp. I just couldn't help myself, I had to buy this. And so I'm just gonna stamp on this uh, vintage postcard I have here. And it's a little faint, but I love it. Uh, so something you'll also wanna play around with is uh, stamping with existing media and seeing how that changes. Uh, there is so much to do here. Stamping is so fun. I do wanna show you a few examples um, of pieces of mail art I've made with forever stamping. And hopefully my inky fingers don't destroy them all, but it's all part of the charm. So here's one example I have. Um, this was a vintage stamp I found. And just so you know, next time you're at a garage sale or a secondhand shop, look for stamps. There are so many um, and you can get them for cents. Uh, and they're super fun. I don't really know what this message <laughs> or what the occasion for sending this uh, would be, but kind of funny. Here is a, another one. Um, and these are two stamps that I carved. They're sort of old, so they're a little bit grubby. Um, but what I liked here was sort of creating a pattern or a texture with stamps. Here is another one that I created. Um, for this one, actually, I used two different stamp blocks. So this is multi-block printing. Um, so one of them, I just carved the shadow of the ladder and the other block was the face of the ladder. Here's a postcard I made. Um, and this is, I used the same trick of using a post-it to sort of like block out some space. Here's another one, it's very faint. I wanted to go monotone for this. Um, and this is incorporating a little bit of found objects. I think this is the back of a ticket stub. Here is one with some more variety of stamping. Um, I really love to stamp onto stickers and then overlay those, so that's what's going on here. And of course, some collage of graph paper. I also have this really fun uh, happy birthday stamp that's in this old English script. Lastly, um, I have a collection of Eames furniture stamps, which are shown here that I picked up at a garage sale. Um, and I wanted to sort of go heavy with them and create sort of a backdrop uh, for a letter. And I just have a piece of vellum here that I'm gonna tape down and write my message on, overlaid. So hopefully you liked those examples and you feel confident enough to make your own rubber stamp. Uh, I do have a few prompts for you, as always, if you wanna use them. And my prompts are to design your own stamp, hand carve it, and stamp it on a piece of mail that is intentionally collaborative. Um, so me personally, I'm definitely gonna put these box stamps on some sort of big paper and send them out and have others uh, stamp alongside them. My second prompt is to stamp over something uh, on a postcard to change or add its meaning, uh, like I did with that Chihuahua stamp, kind of silly, uh, but stamping on existing media can go a long way. So thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope this has inspired you and you're right off to make your own stamps. We would love to see what you've created. Um, and so if you wanna mail us something, that would be incredible. Um, I have an address here for the Minnesota Center for Book Arts, and we're gonna be displaying the mail on our front window along Washington Avenue, so that will be a fun installation. Um, if you've made something that you're sending to someone else, no hard feelings, we would still love to see it. So if you wanna use the hashtag 
mailed it. Uh, we would love to see it there online. If you want to watch past videos, you can go to our website, mnbookarts.org, um, and those are all archived there. Also, if you want to support us, you can go to mnbookarts.org backslash support. Today is the last day to participate in our open heart challenge, and the first $10,000 donated will be matched one to one, dollar to dollar. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's been a pleasure, and I'll see you next week.